Hey, today I'd like to introduce you to Model 1.0. Model has been in development for over a year now, and it's now hit the 1.0 release milestone, which means that everybody should give it a try. Now what is Model Lab? Model Lab is a cross-platform, free and open source mod client that runs on Windows, Mac and Linux. In this case, I'm running it on Ubuntu. Model's main features are speed, visibility, versatility, and generally having a good all-around mod client that everybody can use. So when you first open Modlet, you see this kind of gray area. There's not much to it because we aren't connected to a mod website yet. So why don't we do that at first, because that's what you use Modlet for, huh? I can click on the connect button on top, and I get the connection dialog. I don't have any profiles created yet except for standard, some standard stock ones that come with Modlet. So what I'll do is just click on new right here. And I have the option to fill in my profile now. Now we'll Fields are split up into three, required, optional, and informational. Required optional is obviously required, so why don't we fill in that in first. Profile name, I'll put in the key, because of us all we're playing, but really, I can call it anything I'd like. Next is the server address and port. You get this information from your mod website. In my case, it will be akia.com and port 23. Next is the optional field. You can see I can put in my character name, password, and it has an auto connect option. I would like to use auto connect, so what I'll do is I'll put in my character name, then I'll put in my character password, and I'll take the auto connect on start button. Then I click connect, and voila, it connected, and it logged me in automatically. Now, if at first when you start Mudlet and you connect to a mod and you see that the text quality isn't all that you'd like it to be, you can fix this by enabling auto anti-aliasing. To do that, you go to the settings window, click on main display, you can right here click check the checkbox, enable anti-aliasing. For some people you don't need to do this, so for some people do, it's really a personal thing, so you do whatever is best for you. Just click save and you can see, for me, text quality looks much much better. So now to introduce you to the main model interface. On top you have some quick action buttons. You have the connect button which is the button that opens the connection dialog. Next you have triggers, aliases, timers, buttons, scripts and keys. These are all buttons that are related to the script editor. We'll get to them later in a bit. Next is the manual button. It opens the Mudlet online manual for you. Settings button opens your Mudlet settings. Notepad. This little opens a little notepad that you can use for writing down notes. This is a. It's rather handy because you need to save it. It's actually saved for you automatically. Next, you have a replay button. This is related to the replay feature, which will be covered in later screencasts. After that, you have a reconnect button. Reconnects you to the mod, kind of simple. And you have a multi view button. This is in case that you're playing several mods at a time and you want to see several characters of yours in one model screen, you can use this. And of course, you have a bar button. So next, you see the main window. This is where you see all the text from the mod. Main window does support color and it's also really, really fast. We've optimized it to be very efficient, such that in case of a raid where you're getting hundreds of lines per second, the modlet client will not lag down. It will still display everything as it's coming in. So it's quite handy to have. And of course, just like you expect of a good mod client, it features a split screen. So if you scroll up, the screen will split into two. It will split the bottom part, which is the current text, and the top part is the text that you've scrolled to. You can also scroll this up and down. And to test it, I can get some output from my here, so you see the bottom part changed, but the top part changed the same. Very handy. I can press escape or scroll all the way down to close the split screen. Next would be the input line. The input line, just like any other, accepts text. You press enter and it gets sent to mud. It also features auto completion. It has two types of action. It has stop completion and up and down button completion or input completion, however you want to call it. To go over the tab completion, what tab completion does is that you type something in 
uh, for example, type mono, and I press tab, and it completed to monolith. Why? Because incompletes from the mod output. For example, you saw the word monolith right here. I typed mono, and it completed for me. This can be really handy for typing of those really words, those really long words that somebody sent to you. You don't want to copy paste it. You just type the start of it, press tab, and it'll complete for you. Very handy. And of course, the input completion is for the text that you've previously sent. For example, if I type score, and I don't want to type it again, I can just type SCC, and I can press a button to complete the word. So you see, it's very handy. And of course, if I don't have anything typed and I press the up button, you'll go over my previous commands. So this is your command history. You can go up and down with the history. Very, very handy. After this, we have these several buttons that do some important stuff. That's why they are here. First one is the timestamps button. You click on it, and it'll display the timestamp. Timestamp format is hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. You can press it again to disable that. Next two buttons are to record a replay and to record logging. We'll get to that later. But one button that you should always know about is this little button that looks like a bomb. It's called the emergency stop button. In case your system that you've coded suddenly gets into an infinite loop and starts spamming everybody in your mud, you want to press this button right away, it'll stop all your triggers right away, very quickly, and you'll stop the spam. So, next let's go into our script editor and create some basic things that you need for any mod plane. At first, let's create a new trigger. After you open the script editor, you see two panels. You have buttons on the top, and you have the filtering buttons on the right. Filtering buttons they filter your system depending on the type. So you can see, I can, if I click this, I'll see all triggers. If I click this, I'll see all aliases. At first, I want to create a new trigger. So I click on triggers and I click on add item. Ta da! We've created a brand new trigger. Uh, for trigger name, this is a field that you can just use to uniquely identify your trigger if you want to find it sometime later. Put in anything you want here. Mudlet doesn't care which put in. So if I want to name it my first trigger, it'll be fine with that. Next is the same send plain text field, which is really handy if you want to create a simple trigger, which we'll do right now. For example, let's make it such that whenever we see the words a massive gatehouse, we send hello. We can use the simple send plain text for that. I can send say hello. Now we need to give a trigger a pattern, which is something that the trigger should be looking for in the text for it to match. So I paste our pattern right here. For pattern type, I select exact match. I'll go over the different match types later in later screencasts, but for now we want to do exact match. This means that the text coming from the mud has to exactly match our pattern. I can click save. Now you might notice that the trigger at first is not activated yet. You can press the activate button, and now it's activated and working. So I just type QL again. It's our uh, words again, a massive gatehouse, and you see Mudlet send this text, say hello. And it worked. Quite nice, huh? Now, over other different options, you can have a trigger play a sound for you. You can have a multi-line trigger, a filter trigger, or a match -all. Trigger. These are all rather advanced options that will be useful to experienced scripters. But an easy thing you can do is colorize the text with this little option. Color the trigger. I enable it, and I can select the foreground.